is a school dropout. You have people like the Henry Ford, the founder of Ford Motor, died so many years, but he died in a comfortable life. And mm -hmm. he, had, he had three months of education. So education is a good thing, and I always encourage people, you pursue education. Every chance that you have for a certificate, for a diploma, do it. But education should not become a stumbling block or a hindrance to achieving your goals and dreams. Education versus money, which one would definitely straight on lead you to achieving or fulfilling your dreams? Uh, we have even in here in Uganda, you look in Kampala, we have uh, one, when you look at some of the richest, you know, people in Kampala, they don't have education. But that should not give you a leeway to drop out of school. And like, you know, in this 21st century, education is a vital key. You know, technology is developing every other day, something new comes up, and it needs education. So if you are pursuing education, pursue education, but knowing that education is not the answer to everything. Okay. Yeah. D Dr. Disney, a, a human being lives in a society, and let's talk about the, the role of mentors, the role of teachers, the role of people who can influence you positively towards achieving your dream. Um, what do you take and what don't you take? How do you distinguish between what to take and what not to take from what people say to you? I, um, I read books I, everywhere. I travel, I'm a frequent flyer. Every airport I stop to, I buy a book, but I don't buy every book. I buy a book according to my calling, if I could say. If you listening to Dr. Destin Tabazi, you may take everything that is speaking, or you may not, because I might be outside of what your passion <coughs> is. Let us say you are a grave digger, and I have nothing to do about grave digging. So I, I have nothing for you when you are, you know, you want to become an expert in grave digging. So you have to know exactly what you want and who to listen to, oh. because yes, we become what we hear. Mm. You see, most of your books seem to be uh, geared towards dreams. Uh, I would look at The Dream, Who Lives It? That is one of the books you've written. And then Fulfilling Your Dreams, that very, very book that we are looking at at this time. Why is your concern so much more on dreams of people getting to where they want to be in life? Because many people have lost. They are lost in the wilderness. They cannot find out who they are, and they cannot find out the dream in them. And that's why you find so many people on our streets. Hang, they have degrees, they have, you know, the degrees are hanging on the walls and they themselves are hanging on the streets because they don't know their dream. They don't know who they are and they cannot wake up every morning to pursue the thing that is in them. That's why my passion is helping people to realize who they are so they can move from where they are to where they need to be. I would definitely, I, I think, dwell on the question that Joseph Hart earlier asked a little bit. Uh, ca ca can we just have a step by step a routine or way? Probably it could be 10 ways or it could be about five steps that you would go through to see to it um, that you fulfill your dream, leaving all the other factors constant, of course. Mm. Uh, could, could that be easily dissected and the viewer could get to know? Maybe someone is out there and they have a dream so big and they look at it and say, I think I cannot be able to, for, to, to get to that. In order for you to fulfill your dreams, there are principles that you cannot bypass. And one of the principles is persistence. You have to persist and you have to know exactly what is it that you want in life and pursue it until you achieve it. Oh. Do Dr. Disney, you had some time as a boxer. Let's reach out to the boxers out there. What does it take to be a successful boxer? What it takes to be a successful boxer is uh, persistence. First of all, you have to be, you have to train. You have to be in the gym every day. You have to listen to your coach. You have to prepare your mind every day to be able to get in the ring and win the game. It's a preparation, it's a journey that you wake up every morning thinking and meditating upon it. Is there a place for education, uh, I, I beg your pardon, educated people in boxing? When you look at the Ugandan context, it's about people who have failed to go through school, mm -hmm. then they find something to do. It's most, most times a soft landing. Is there a place for educated people in boxing? 
Yes, a matter of fact, education, I mean, the boxing is, uh, have been diverted in the last few years. Uh, boxing was original in schools. In Uganda here, boxing started in schools. So boxing is known for reflux and for people who have failures. And I think I'm also a good uh, example that, you know, I'm a former professional boxer, and now I'm a motivational speaker with, you know, certificates, diplomas, and degrees. So uh, boxing is known for failures. Mm. And, and the welding aspect, welding, what yeah. does it take to be a good welder? There are very many people who earn their bread from welding. Mm. T talk to us about welding. <laughs> When, you, when I look at the welding in Uganda, it's not really welding. I, I cry every single day when I'm entering into a building and I look at the structure, the way it's been welding. Welding is, 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 a, a, is a life and death thing because whatever you're working on it, most of the, uh, 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 the structures, like for instance, I was in a, a, a structured design, so designing big, building massives that you get the uh, blueprint and you read and you structure it it's, and you, you you it's like you uh, you're working on somebody's life you're working on this structure that's going to be a bridge and if you don't concentrate welding is not something that you just you know I go to uh, Uganda I think our nation people are out there to earn a living not to do what you know what their profession is they get on the job and some people they sit in front of the camera just wait for their salary <laughs> but they don't have the passion to give it to the people i mean i'm not talking about you i'm talking about other people okay okay just just a minute the the theology aspect yeah yeah it's one thing that very many people <laughs> run away from is it cool being a theologian from your experience it is uh, it is uh, it's not a bad thing I'm, I'm, I, uh, I did theology because I had a calling on my life and there's a difference between a calling and a profession and I'm also a pastor I'm pastoring a church called the Church of Champions in Intinda on matters oh, well okay okay but that's a calling and uh, you can also decide to go to the you know institution and institution and decided to become a theologian. Well, uh, uh, theology is it a profession? Is it a calling? When uh, I for a long time I thought about doing theology, mm. but it was not because I wanted to be a pastor. <laughs> it was about getting to understand certain things in the Bible. Is, is it a prof? Can theology uh, be a profession? Theology can be a profession, but uh, the uh, pastor part of it, being a pastor, pastor is not a profession; it's a calling. But you can do theology and be a profession, take that profession in theology. But uh, when, when you talk about callings in the same aspect, some people have dreamed to become pastors, by the way, because definitely maybe their pastor uh, drives a BMW yeah, and owns a that's, very big house. Thank you very and much. And that is what they dream <laughs> of becoming. Yeah. Let's dissect a calling mm. and a dream, most especially relating to being a pastor or pastoring people. Yeah. Uh, look, for me, I gave my life to the Lord in 1989 at KPC, around, you know, uh, is it Bomb Road, whatever mm. they call it. That's Watoto Church. Watoto now. Church now. Yes. And uh, uh, I didn't give my life to the Lord to become a pastor. I was really trying to protect myself from AIDS. And so let me just go give my life to the Lord so I can live a holy life, so I, I can, you know, live, you know, a life that won't be, you know, moving around and chasing, you know, girls. Because, you know, uh, seven of my brothers died of HIV. And so, I, but as I walk in my